Uh, let's bring him in. Frank, I've had one win on the Daily Faceoff Survivor Pool game. Just checking if you've had one yet. Zero. All right. Well, there's always next season. Uh, you know what? In fact, um, I had a meeting today with the powers that be, and I said, I'm not asking for the Daily Faceoff Survivor game to be easier. Just saying, like, if we do redo this next year, perhaps we, like, change the algorithm or whatever it is, the game uh, difficulty level, because I, I've i gotten to day four one time, and I picked a straight-up winner, and my team lost in OT, so I've never actually won a prize this year, and I, I don't, like, it's not a participation ribbon, like, we don't hand those out here <laughs> at Daily Faceoff, but it, it is mildly mind-blowing how difficult it is. It is, and I'll tell you, it's it's cool to hang my hat on the fact that I've won once because it is it is extremely hard to win, and I'll tell That's you, that, a flex, uh, dude. Like I know that Dave's think, double think tasted about, better. Think about how many weeks there are in a season, and how many you know days there are in terms of if you win the week, you win four times. The total leader for five thousand dollars cash is at thirty correct answers. Yeah, that it's insane. Not very many. It's insane. And I, I wish I was that leader, but I'm not, unfortunately. Maybe next season. Maybe next season. Uh, okay, Frank, we wanted to ask you about the Canucks and just what the conversations that you've had with, you know, GMs, people around the league, like, what are the Canucks viewed as right now? Are they viewed as contenders? Are they viewed as pretenders? We just played a clip of Rick talking, talking about how his team needs to have some urgency and needs to turn things around before the playoffs start. So... How are they viewed around the league? Are they contenders or pretenders? My answer would be somewhere in the middle. Um, there, I think a lot of teams realize how talented Vancouver is and how strong their structure was at varying points of this year. Um, I don't think anyone is necessarily quaking in their boots to face them if they were to end up being the one seed out of the Pacific. And that's not a knock against them. It's just that the West is so good. You're going to have to go through good teams regardless. And so are the Canucks more feared or less feared than Vegas, even though they're going to finish ahead of them in the standings? The answer is Vegas is more feared. Now that's a different question and a different answer than my level of concern for Vancouver right now. And I would say it's like a seven. It's, not nothing, but the fact that the games always at this point in the year get harder, the difficulty level ratchets up in a big way, the compete, that I'm a little bit surprised that this team that's had a lot of those elements all season long is suddenly missing some of the consistency marks of that. And the other part is that teams are also just playing better. So they're not rising to that level. So part of it's on them. Part of it is matching what's being thrown at them. And I think there's plenty of time left to right the ship. But I do think that this Canucks team, having not had a ton of playoff experience, could probably use going in to feel more confident than they are, than they are right now. Frank, are you a believer in the concept that a team needs to be peaking heading into the playoffs, then that they need to be playing their best hockey at the conclusion of the regular season to maximize their odds of playoff success? Or are you a believer that the playoffs are just completely different and what you did in game 82 doesn't really matter? I tend to lean towards it not mattering as much because I think we've seen plenty of examples of teams that Look at the Florida Panthers last year, and I hate the idea that everyone brings up the eight seed and the miracle run. That's not what I'm getting at here. And by the way, that's a bullshit narrative for that Florida team because they won the President's Trophy the year before that and were clearly talented. What the, the reason I brought it up is because, and the point I wanted to make is, they lost, quite literally lost their way into the postseason last year. They were down and out, and if not for the Pittsburgh Penguins absolutely gagging on it at home against the Chicago Blackhawks, the Panthers wouldn't have been in the playoffs. So I don't know that you necessarily need to be at your absolute best, um, but what you do need to recognize 
is what Rick Tockett is saying is that if you think this is hard, it's only going to be five times harder when it comes to the playoffs and you better get ready for it. There's another narrative though, that's going to be really interesting to watch unfold when it comes to this Canucks team. And that is the idea or philosophy that somehow you needed to have lost along the way. And that's one that I think the Canucks are really, they're in a position to challenge because unlike even the Kings who have lost two years in a row to the Oilers in the first round, they at least have some taste of it. This Canucks team, yeah, I guess you could maybe look back at the bubble and say there's maybe a little bit of it, but it's a totally different team, different coach, different everything to me that I say, how do they react? when they're thrown into the pressure cooker and the deep end of the pool. We'll see. Um, but it's an interesting narrative to try and challenge because almost every team that you can think of that's broken through and won the Stanley cup. None of them really did it on the first try. Hmm. Frank, what the hell's going on in the East? We're looking at the East wild Chris. I don't even want to call it a race. We're, like we're looking at it, and one of these teams is going to make the playoffs. One of these teams is going to finish four, four, and two and make the playoffs. That's what it feels like. Um, I my money would be on the Flyers and the Caps, but I don't have any evidence to really even support that. You know, you would think from a pure talent perspective that Detroit would get it together. Uh, the the Penguins are suddenly, they've doubled their playoff chances, still only 10%, but they were hovering around five a few days ago. They're suddenly alive because no one's really putting it to bed. No one's running away. All, all someone needed to do was go like seven, two, and one in a 10 game stretch, and this thing's over. We're not even talking about it. But they're allowing teams to linger and it's kind of in an uninteresting way, creating some drama. Whether it's the East or the West, what potential playoff matchups do you most want to see happen? I always root for chaos. So for me, um, and you didn't ask first round or second, but even just from a first round perspective, Edmonton Vegas, a rematch of last year's second round, that's tremendous. At any point, giving me Dallas and Colorado is going to be an absolute heavyweight tilt. And out east, I mean, Florida, Boston will be good if that happens. I think even any team facing the Leafs is always some pretty quality drama, but we could also potentially get a lot of things would need to happen, but we could potentially get with the Panthers having lost eight of 10 Florida and Tampa, it's going to be hard, but still possible in round one that that would be pretty good. And by the way, it feels like they've met a bunch recently, but Rangers Carolina would be quite good too. Frank, will you give us a Stanley cup prediction? You don't have to give us both teams. Just who's going to win the cup. Uh, so I picked Dallas before the season started. I don't really see any real reason to move off of that pick. I would love to see a Dallas Florida cup final just because two teams that I think have a heaviness to their game, a physicality and also loads of skill and depth. Um, I don't know what that would do for TV ratings. Probably <laughs> not much another all sort of Sunbelt Stanley cup final that people in Canada kind of yawn when they hear, but the hockey would be undeniably good. Frank, is there a top 10 NHL team that is widely viewed as a cup contender that you're maybe not fully sold on the Bruins? Mm. I like their, like they might win the president's trophy for the second year in a row. I don't want to continue to pick at the scab of their center position and how that's a weakness. And with all due respect to the amazing season that Charlie Coyle has had for what was expected of him, he's way exceeded expectations and their goaltending continues to be great. And I really like their defense. I just, to me, I, I know they've had a good regular season and I don't know if it's just 
last year that kind of sticks out to me, but I'm there's something about them that I don't really like, and I don't know exactly what that is. And I'm really not sold on the Winnipeg Jets, and I haven't been sold on the Jets for a long time. They just don't score enough for me, and their top line has been in shambles of late. They're not playing well down the stretch. Their power play, which was dreadful for most of the season, that finally turned around after picking up Sean Monahan, is now back in a rut. And their penalty kill hasn't been great either. So Connor Hellebuck could be the equalizer of all equalizers. I just, that's a lot of heavy lifting to do to get 16 wins. Not all on your own, but a lot of it will have to be on his back. There's going to be a lot of heavy lifting in Arizona, it would seem. Uh, you reported that the Coyotes don't have the green light to make contract offers next season. Canucks play the Coyotes tonight, so it's a bit topical, but can you expand on that report? Yeah, I would say that it's... it's. Oh, by the way, it's not all contract offers. Like, if they were offering someone an entry-level deal or a, you know, a, a small sort of you know, one year, small term, small dollar deal. Like they could, they get that done. Yeah, they could, but they're not going to be lopping a seven or eight year offer for 50 some million dollars onto someone's plate right now. No, they do not have the green light to do that. And it's due to the influx of the franchise. Are they moving? Are they relocating? Are they going to be in Arizona? They've got basically seven weeks to figure this out. And until that happens, um, until we have clarity one way or the other, is Alex Maruello going to continue owning this team? Then they don't have that ability at this moment in time, at least what I'm told. Frank, just before we let you go, do you, uh, are you in favor of expanding the playoffs? I could be. I, I would love to see a play-in. Um, I know that Gary Bettman has said that he doesn't like the idea of it, he feels like it kind of cheapens it. And also, like, if we're being honest, the NHL doesn't like it when other teams steal their ideas, especially ones that they've had first, which they've been really good at some things, including Coach's Challenge and reviews. And there's a lot of things that the NHL has gotten right over their time that they, you know, feel like they didn't get enough credit for from other leagues that stole some of those ideas. I think the fact that the NBA has the play in first, it kind of hurts the NHL because they're like, oh, we don't want to copycat anyone, even though I think it makes perfect sense. I also love the in-season tournament, by the way. The season's too long, 82 games that 60 of them, like you you just like shrug after and you're like, well, they lost, but there's always next one. And that's just the truth of the the nature of how long the season is. I'd love to see more importance placed in in games that are sort of run of the mill or at least were on the schedule. And to bring it back to the increased playoff, like on the one hand, I think it's the best tournament in sports and it's definitely the toughest trophy to win. But that doesn't mean that a good thing can't be even better. The one thing that really sucks about the Stanley cup playoffs is that the Stan the first round is by far the best. And as you get to the final, it gets worse. Whereas in basketball, it's the other way around. The first round sucks. And when you get to the finals, it's like unbelievable. And I don't know how the NHL transcends that part of it is these players are just beat to shit after going through three crazy grueling rounds with travel that by the time they get to the cup final, look at Florida last year, wasn't even a great series because half their lineup, it felt like needed off season surgery that, Oh, by the way, kept most of their defense core out until December. Like these weren't little cupcake injuries that he needs two weeks to heal. These are, Hey, this guy's having hip or hernia surgery and could barely walk. And Matthew Kachuk needed Brady to get him out of bed on game days. Like, that's real deal stuff. And if people saw the behind the scenes of it, I think it would be so much cooler. But the fact that the league isn't willing to at least right now open up those doors and show us, then make what's already your marquee first round a little bit spicier with some play-ins. Or I don't want to say like make it gimmicky, but like 
if what if we had a situation like the PWHL where you could pick your opponent in round one? I don't think that would ever happen because most managers like they don't have the the marbles to do it and call out a team um, to pick them. But man, it would be pretty entertaining. You know, if two teams are tied, you get to pick. If you're the higher seed, you get to pick which one you want to face. I don't know. Like, there's different ways to do it and make it a little bit spicier. Yeah, I've been throwing them out. I've been looking at NBA. I've been looking at Major League Baseball. It's uh, yeah, there's there's different options, and I, I kind of like what you just said there about uh, a potential play in round. But we'll see. We'll see. That's I still like my new tagline from Quads. My new tagline is "I kind of like what you just said." Gee, <laughs> thanks a lot for having me. I still don't understand the NBA in season tournament, but one day I will. One day I'll uh, completely understand how it works. One day. Hey, I have some news. Okay. I'm spending the first round of the playoffs in Vancouver. Okay. Nice. We're going to get you in studio. I hope. Yes. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to hanging with the Canucks and, uh, and the Vancouver market. I, I love, I've said from jump street this season, I, I, I liked what you guys were building in van with the Canucks and I want to see what it looks like in person in the first round. Well, I'm excited that you're going to be here and we're going to have to uh, take you out around Vancouver. There's some good spots. Uh, we'll take you out. It's going to be a good time. Thanks so much for doing this today, Frank. See you guys. There he is Frank Cervelli. You can find him all over dailyfaceoff.com and you're going to find him all over Canucks conversation during the first round of the playoffs. News to us, but that's exciting. Like That's going to be that's a good awesome. time. Yeah, it's going to be great having Frank uh, in studio. Canucks Conversation is live Monday through Friday, every weekday at 2 p.m. over on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and interact in the YouTube live chat every day with us, folks.